this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. Uh, Sunday chat today is going to be lots and lots of little tiny bits. And it's a cold beer day, not a coffee day. I'm far too early for wine, so that's what goes in between. Right, and it is lots of little bits, and I've written them all down. <laughs> Terrible, I don't I don't think that's lack of memory. I probably would have remembered most of them, but knowing me, I'd have just forgotten one and it would have been one of the important ones. It's no trouble to write things down and then I can cross them off as I do them, so I may not do them in the order they are there. They are lots of little bits. First of all, Sarah at Burnham's. Thanks for all those people who went across and subscribed and watched the video and st stuck a like in. That's very rewarding when it's your first video on a brand new channel. Trust me, I remember. <laughs> See, I have got a memory. That was a while ago. Um, that was important. And it's also, the other thing that goes with it is to everybody else's advantage because it encourages the person to do some more. And on that subject, she's done another one. So pop across and watch that one. And I've got a feeling that may be what some of the videos will be like. When those specimen plants come into bloom, we can't compete with that. So that's the place they'll be. So pop across and see that, and um, Sarah sends her thanks for those of you who've uh, gone across and had a look. I think she was a bit surprised. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've spoken to people that sort of in the past have started their channel, and they went two or three days before anybody even watched it. Well, when you put a brand new channel up, if you don't, get some other people to sort of push people in that direction. You can sit there on your own for a long time. So that's that. Um, I've been harping on about my, my own subscribers to get to that 10k and the little spurge I had has done remarkably well. So thanks for everybody who's now subscribed that wasn't before and obviously to any new people that have just found the channel. But at the beginning of the month we had 9 to 50 odd um, people subscribe to the channel. We're now up to 9,500 ish. That's quite a rate of increase for my channel. The, the largest rate in a month I've ever had. So thanks for that. And those of you who still haven't done it, <laughs> come on, <laughs> get me up to that 10k. Uh, it won't, won't make any difference to you lot, but I will say now I'll make it worth your while. There's going to be a pretty good giveaway when I get to 10k. And um, I obviously can't send plants all over the world. <sighs> How about money? Or a voucher or something to go and spend on some orchids. So come on, get those subscriptions in. Because I warn you now, there's n nobody gets to take part in the draw unless you're subscribed. Doesn't matter how soon you've subscribed or how long you've been subscribed, but you need to be. Right, so that's that. Um, Temperatures. I was listening to um, Zaina's video on, um, she did it as a, I think she did it as a Zoom meeting originally for um, society members. That will be Orchid Society of Great Britain because hers is a national one, not a local one. Um, and basically she was on about temperatures. Uh, now she grows warm. She has a minimum of like 18-ish. So she has heaters on in the summer, because even though it might be hot during the day, I mean, what is it now, 27 something in here at the moment, and that's with everything off, it'll climb up as I'm rabbiting. Um, but you can, you can, outside, you can go down to 10, 11 degrees at night, and depending on how much of your heat drifts away during the night, I mean, I've, I've had a low of 14 in here over the last couple of weeks. But, you know, that's, that's my, nearly my winter temperature. And that's in the middle of summer. So we do get cold nights sometimes. Um, my little minimum maximum thing, um, I, I've just looked at it today to see what I've had. That's how I found out we've had a 14 something. But the maximum on there, given that we've had a pretty hot day this week, on Friday it went up to one of our highest ever temperatures at Heathrow Airport, it was 38 degrees. Now it was nowhere near that hot here where I live, it was more like 28. But that means obviously the air coming in to cool this place down isn't, because it's the same, but my maximum was 28 point something. 
and that included that really hot day on Friday. So I'm keeping my temperature down reasonably well. I'm happy with 28 as a maximum. That's, that's fine. I'm going to keep my humidity up. So that's that. Um, we've lost a YouTube channel. I don't personally know why. I'm sure some people do. But Denise Noak has got rid of all of her orchids, all her equipment, materials, everything. The whole lot's gone for, for a reason that I don't know. But that's the channel gone. These things happen, but, you know... So, uh, you know, there was a final video. The YouTube channel will stay there, it just won't get any more new ones put in there. Um, you know, if you think about it, Rick. I doubt if we'll ever get another video from Rick. But he's left his legacy behind. All these videos are there for all to see. They still get watched, you know, so. Um, never delete a channel, unless it is absolute rubbish. And you're so embarrassed you want it gone. <laughs> And that very rarely happens, I'm sure. Right, that's that. Um, discussing my videos, there are some main sections. You've got Sunday chat, yeah? The questions and answers, which is getting thin on the ground and will get missed quite frequently because I'm not getting the questions in. If I haven't got the questions, I can't do the answers, can I? Uh, you know, even if I have to look them up. If I don't get the questions in, the Q's and A's on Thursday is going to die. So it's, it's up to you. But it is popular when I can do it. But it does need the questions to come in. So that's that one. My Sunday chat, the questions and answers, unboxing, pardon me, or new orchids type videos, like bringing them home from Burnham's, um, and kitchen stuff. Those are the ones that are most popular and those are most of the types I do. I mean we've got our project plants, they're quite popular but we're in between two periods with those at the moment. You know I occasionally do a type like let's have a look at the catlias, they're quite popular. Um, my field trips I love doing. They're not popular. You have a look at the views on the latest two. They're not popular. So that, you know, there's a lot of people probably think that's not tropical orchids, I'm not interested. I'm okay with that. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing them. It just means they're nowhere near as popular. I don't get the views, but those that watch them seem to enjoy them. So I'll carry on doing them. There won't be many more this year, if any. The um, butterfly season is coming to a close. Um, there are still a few that will have second broods. And our native orchids are nearly over now. There's not a lot left. Um, the only thing that's possibly not in bloom yet that will be very soon is the um, Autumn Ladies Tresses. It's all in the name, you know, <laughs> Autumn. <laughs> um, but they start blooming about the middle of August normally. Um, they're not worth doing a field trip for. They're about that high with the tiniest of white flowers on. Um, uh, the nearest ones are, for me, are Babbury Rings, which is a lovely place to visit. But it's a lot of that again, and some of that, you know. When I did the last one, okay, I did two, two trips in one day, which may have been a mistake, but I've got, I've got to justify the distance, you know, the fuel, the drive time, and all that sort of stuff. And um, that did me in. I didn't move about much the next day. <laughs> and when I did, I talked about it, you know. <laughs> we had chats about, this doesn't seem to work properly. Oh, dear. <laughs> and assorted language but yeah I, I was hurting the next day now what did me in was the hill the Morgan's Hill I didn't realize from where I parked the car to the top where I would start looking was so far I thought it was just a little jaunt and you're up there it was a long long way and like that and rough ground too no sensible path or anything well, you saw a little bit of the path on there. <laughs> Just a little bit of worn out grass in places. That's what most of it was like. Um, <clears throat> right, so that's types of videos. Again, video requests. you only got to ask, and if they're at all possible, then I'll give it a go. Unless I feel that somebody's asked for something that absolutely nobody else would be interested in. Though I doubt if that would happen. It's got to be something to do with what's here, isn't it? If you think about it. So that's my types of videos, the most popular ones, and I have still yet to find out why that video took off. 
It was the one, it was Zainer's plants coming back from Burnham's, having a look at them. Now bearing in mind, to find out what I said in that video, you had to watch it. So what was in the video was not the reason for it taking off. You see what I mean? Because <laughs> um, the normal people who watch my videos would have been the ones that watched it. Well, who were all the others then? Where did they come from? And that video got shared somewhere that, and just got a mass of views. But to run up over 4,000 views in one of my little videos, you know, normal sort of weekday, nothing special, no big celebration or anything, something funny happened with that one. I'm internally grateful, <laughs> but I wouldn't mind knowing how it happened. Who did what to do that? I've well, still yet to find out. We probably never will. Several people have come up with some ideas and some sort of, the sort of sites that might have grabbed hold of it. Um, but most of the sites there, somebody would have had to push it rather than them grab hold of it, if you see what I mean. Um, so that's videos. Yes, it's still here, and yes, it's got another week. We had the printer saga, where I couldn't print the returns label. Brand new printer comes in. Wireless printer, brilliant. That doesn't use up one of my flipping uh, HDMI ports or USB ports. So it doesn't use a connection to the laptop. It's just totally wireless. I thought nothing could be simpler. Wrong. <laughs> Follow the instructions, get the manual out, do this, do that. You have to go to the um, website of the manufacturer, put in your model, and it comes up with a download, which is the software to run your pit printer. Did that work? Did it hell. Could I work out why it didn't? No. So we get on the internet and see who else has had a problem. And you get all these people giving you advice. Oh, what you've got to do is this. No, I've already done that. I'm not stupid. But what you've got to do is this. No, that didn't work. Blah, blah, blah. And an hour I played with that. And boy, was there some language. And it's a good job it's not breakable as well. <laughs> I did throw it across the room, but I did think about it. Um, and basically, one item had it hit the nail on the head. It took me a while to get to that item because I wasn't putting the right question in. I kept questioning why won't my printer work type thing when in fact the question I needed to put in is why won't my printer work with a Virgin Media Hub? That was the question and it was the hub that was the problem. The default settings don't allow that to work. So I had to log into the hub, change a couple of little settings, come out Turn the hub off so that it rebooted, switch the printer on, flashy, 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 steady light, straight on. An hour I played with that. <laughs> and the first thing I did was print the reply label. So I've got it, but got an email. Oh, I'm away for the, for the week. Can you send it to arrive around the 8th when I'm back? So it's here for another week. I'm getting to the point where I just think, blow it, I'll flip and keep it. But, uh, no, it's the principle, it's going back. I've got sold a duff one. Right, so that's printer stuff. I'm sure you're not really interested in that at all. But it was necessary to get the label to be able to send that plant back. And the price I paid for, paid for that plant, plus, plus the postage, is a fair bit more than what I paid for the one from Sarah. So getting that money back for the duff one pays for the one I got from Sarah. So I'm going to do it. We're going to push that one through whether he likes it or not. I keep thinking he's putting it off. Right, so that's that. Right, young Dimitri. Dimmy. Guy from Switzerland with the, um, the green nerd, I think the channel is, with the green wall. An indoor wall which is just a mass of plants. Smashing thing to see. I bet it's even better in real life. Um, He's doing a live broadcast on Tuesday the 4th at 8.30 Swiss time. Now, I don't even know if Swiss time is the same as UK time. You'll have to do your own thing with the time. But he's done a video announcing it with the date and the time. So, that's my plug for Dimmy. 
That's a live broadcast and apparently he's borrowing a friend's phone which has a quality camera so he shouldn't have the uh, little niggles he had with his own phone. Right, uh, the other thing is just a, a sideline. Mum's party that you heard me talking about is off the ground now and we're going to do the cream tea thing. A long chat with Hannah, she's not going to come. She said, with all the surgery and all the hardship and all the hassle I've had in my life to get myself a reasonable life with a possible future, how stupid would it be to shut myself away in a room indoors with 30 people? And I, ju I just went quiet for a bit and I said, that's it, that's the end of the discussion. As far as I'm concerned, don't come. It's a shame, it's an important landmark, but <laughs> it got me thinking, do I really want to shut myself in a room with 30 people? <laughs> Still, I can't not go. Uh, apparently the doors and windows will be open and you can step outside any time you want. So, uh, anyway, that's that. Um, long, long time ago when I first started building a collection, I bought an awful lot of Cattleya types and some Oncidium types and intergenerics from a single eBay seller. At one point I bought enough plants and actually sent a message to say, I'm going to Burnham's Nursery, I'm practically driving past your house, can I call in and collect my orchids to save you wrapping them up and posting them? So I actually visited the lady. She's selling again. Now, I didn't know at the time, in fact I'd never even heard of it, but nearly all of those plants had Fusarium and many of them died as a consequence because I didn't know what I had and I didn't even know to treat it, if you see what I mean. She's selling a few back on eBay again, so this is a warning shot. Now, she may have replaced her whole collection. She may have found out that she had a problem and dealt with it. And it may be fine now, but I lost a lot of orchids as a consequence, and the seller is Big Ellie. Now, she's a smashing lady and had a lovely collection of orchids when I got there, and she gave me a couple in addition to the ones I bought. So I'm not knocking it, I'm just saying that's what happened. Um, you treat that with whatever big pinch of salt you wish to do so. I mean, quite honestly, you can, you can get stuff with Fusarium for one of the, from the real quality nurseries. It doesn't stop you getting it. Depends where they got it from, don't forget. Um, strictly speaking, the stuff that's mass produced in the EU should not be infected with anything. They should have the checks in place to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, I'm saying it shouldn't. Uh, so that's that. Um, uh, you don't want to know about my TV licence. Uh, I've had to pay for a TV licence. Outrageous. They removed the... It used to be that if somebody in the household was over 80, you got the TV licence for free. On the grounds that the older people are the ones that tend to watch those you know, terrestrial channels like BBC One for the news and stuff like that. Um, so it was a concession, but the concession's been removed now. It's funny, my sister said, I don't know what you're making a big fuss about. It's only about 10 quid in it. And I said, how about 157 quid? My sister nearly passed out. <laughs> yeah, 157 quid for the year. Right, that's that. Um... In the um, description of this video, I'll put a link to Zaina's video, um, which was a, a Zoom chat about how she set up her greenhouse and her kit and everything like that. Um, it's not really looking at her plants specifically, although there are some on show. Um, it's more about the setup and everything. Um, and I'll put a link to Dimmy's uh, video as well. So there'll be a couple of links to other videos. Uh, that's that. Um, Yeah, I don't know what will happen. I mean, I don't know, although Zaina did it, she set up a YouTube channel to show that video. Whether there'll ever be any more or not, I don't know. I mean, she is packing up and moving to Italy. The orchids are going as well. Um, but um, whether, the, whether a channel will progress or not, I don't know. Um, that's that. Um, the last 
uh, virtual table display for the Orchid Society uh, where we all send in our photos and they get judged as though they'd been taken into a meeting. I got absolutely nothing, <laughs> as expected quite honestly. I put in the um, Dendrobium Lingueli with its three little pink blooms, um, greatly blown up because they were tiny, um, but didn't get a placement this time. There were only 10 people in that class and um, <laughs> actually um, two of the judges uh, one of them grows terrestrials and the other one has a thing about species if it's if it's not a species it's not a proper orchid um, the other one's a general purpose judge that treats all plants as equal for judging purposes but um, funny how two paphiopedalums got first and second oh dear still at least they weren't owned by the people who did the judging because that has happened before now um, yeah, so I didn't get anything this time. Um, I don't know what the hell I'm going to have next time. That will be in uh, two and a half weeks' time, something like that, three weeks at the most, because it has to be in prior to the end. The end of the month is when it will be judged, and obviously the pictures have to be in beforehand. So I don't know whether I'll have anything. Most of the things I've got in flower are too recent. They're, they were bought recently, so they, they can't go in. The only thing that can possibly hang out, if it can hang out long enough, is the um, Catlia Leopoldii with its three blooms. But I don't think they last that long, so that might not make it. And effectively, I've looking around at other people's comments and having a look around on the internet at various places, the popular name for that is now Tigrina, not Leopoldii. Both are still in use, but the other one's just more popular. So that may go in next time. There isn't going to be anything else, I don't think. There's nothing with buds pushing on at the moment. Um, talking of buds and blooms, dry throat. Look who's back in here. Why, I hear you ask. Well, I'll tell you why. Um, I have a good friend who grows some of the best cymbidiums around and some of the best catlias around and has been doing so an awful lot longer than I've had anything to do with orchids. So when he speaks, I listen, and he has spoken in the past, and I've listened. Now he took a look at this and the first comment really was, have you been spraying that? Have you been dosing that with systemics? Because there's several of the catlia species will object they really don't like it, and it will cause problems with the blooms, distortions and colour breaks. Well, yes, this is very recently at a double dose of systemic fungicide, along with everything else in here, because I don't differentiate. If the, if the plant room's going to get done, they all get done. Well, we found out the hard way that the black hair type dendrobiums do not like systemics, and I've nearly, well, in fact, I have lost a couple as a consequence. Maybe it's that. Maybe it isn't a virus. Maybe it is a total objection to systemics. It could be. So, for the first time ever, it's going to get a third chance. <laughs> Normally they only get second chance, second set of blooms, out. It's going to get a third chance. What it's going to get is a little bit more specific treatment. Being this type of bifoliate cattleya species, under normal circumstances, when it finishes blooming, it has a rest where it gets very little water and no feed. So this needs to be put separate to be able to be treated separate. If it goes back up with the other catlias, it'll just get dunked and whatever done with it that the others get. And no spray on that ever. So if I get bugs on it, I deal with them manually. And then we'll see what it does next time. But that's a year away. These are once a year bloomers, these types of species. It's not going to bloom in the meantime. And quite regular. You can almost time it within a week or two. So we've got a year to wait. Um, but it is coming back in here. And it is going to get given another chance. Just to see. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. But my friend didn't... His first port of thought was not virus because he knows you know an amount that goes on in here um, so that's that 
The problem you've got is, I'm, I'm sure there are more, but pardon me, there are two common, I won't say common, wrong word, strike that word. There are two viruses that are known well. One is the um, Cymbidium mosaic virus, and the other one is the Oncidium ring spot virus. Both of those viruses can go and infect other types of plants, but fundamentally their name says the ones that are most susceptible. So if it's a cattleya, what are they going to look like? Cymbidium leaves are, you know, okay, they're, they're scrappy, but they're not thick, chunky, succulent type leaves, are they? So would a mosaic virus even show on cattleya leaves? And the ring spot, certainly on the Oncidiums, is so obvious. When you see it, you think, oh, that's it. It's not, oh, I wonder. It's just, yeah, that's it. Because it is rings all over the place. Um, how would that look on cattleyas? Because I've never seen rings, apart from bug damage, on cattleya leaves. So those are the two most likely to be around that are known. What would they even look like on a cattleya? How could they show? So have you even got a way of telling, apart from the blooms? That's an open-ended question, you're not going to get an answer, because I don't know. Um, but this plant has had some things going on with it in the not-too-distant past that could have done that to the blooms. And so could it have done it last time, because of my routine, routine programs. So gradually I may get together a list of plants that must not be included in routine treatments. They'll have to go out so that they get missed out. This could be one of them. So we get to keep that for a while. And the first thing I'm going to do when the blooms are gone is I'm going to grab all of those pseudo bulbs and tie them together so that it's bolt upright. Because I'm getting fed up of it knocking and bashing things around with those straggly bits that hang. I've even had to put a rock on here to hold the thing upright. But it's these bits, they catch on things. Yeah, so uh, anyway, we will see what we can do and see if we can give it another go. Blooms are attractive and fragrant. I keep getting a, a waft of uh, that one because the, the, the Tigrina is a bit too far away to get a waft. Um, right, so that's that. Not much left now. Um, oh, yeah. I was just going to say, I've got a note down here, and I immediately thought of that, the, the one that's got the seed pod, and I thought, that's not a Miltonia, that's a Miltoniopsis, you dope. What are you talking about? Of course, then it dawned on me. Where did we get a Miltoniopsis, uh, a Miltonia recently? Oh, you'll also notice that dotted around, some of my pinguiculars have moved home. Having them all in one place is not the best of ideas, because only, they only get the bugs in close proximity. The bugs are not attracted from a huge, dis, huge distance away. So one's gone up here, because I had one of those little fungus gnat things in my face the other day when I was watering. And another one's gone over here. So, uh, so I just thought just move them around a little bit. But uh, I've got to get a plant down there. I can show you what's caught my eye at Burnham's and made me buy the plant. The Miltonia reginellii has opened a bloom. And that's what I saw from a distance. Just that little splash. And that's what attracted me over to the plant. And this plant is in so many hybrids, it's untrue. <laughs> Practically anything that's got a Miltonia in it is, may have a bit of that in there. So that's Miltonia reginellii. It's one of the delicate Miltonias because a lot of them have got quite dark colours. Now this one's a lovely delicate colour. Um, it's virtually pure white um, but it's very subtle. I doubt if the camera will get because the purple on the lip bleeds very very gently to the base of the other two petals just a flush, right at the base. And the sepals have got a hint of green. So it's not just white. It's got subtle colours on it. Um, and we've got quite a few more to come. Most of these spikes have got 
quite a few buds. The one that's just open, one, two, three, four, at least six, possibly seven. One, two, three, four, there's about six on that one. Three, four, five or six on that one, and five or six on that one. So it looks like it averages five or six per spike, possibly a couple more on stronger spikes. But um, yeah, I thought I'd show you that. That's what caught my eye in the nursery from quite a distance away. You know, I was just looking around at seas of green, basically, like you do at a nursery. Um, and that colour, that splash of colour just caught my eye. There weren't many in bloom, there were only a couple, but there was enough to just catch my eye. And again, we've got a tall plant here, so there's not many places I can keep this, so it's had to go up there. So that's the new Miltonia. Um. <laughs> This is an open question, um, because I don't know the answer, but I'd be fascinated to know. In amongst all the people that watch this channel and the other channels, there's quite a lot of people, I'm sure, that grow Phalaenopsis, and uh, in amongst those, there are some that only grow Phalaenopsis, and only grow in the home. You know, there's going to be a good percentage of, of people like that. Um, I for the life of me, cannot understand the fascination in a repotting of Phalaenopsis video. I don't get it. I really don't. But that's what Sarah's first video was. And it was a very simple version of that. It didn't go into a, a huge amount of detail about what sort of roots to cut or you know, how, where to cut the spike precisely. It, it was very, very simple. And what's the fascination in repotting a Phalaenopsis? Because to me, it's the easiest plant in the world to repot. Lovely big fleshy roots. They're either okay or they're not. If they're not, off they come. Those that are okay, if there are any left, go in the pot. You know, media with plenty of air. I, I don't know, but uh, I'd be interested to know. I mean, it's, um, it's difficult for me. I mean, if you think how many plants I've got, okay, there's a lot mounted now, but a mount, doing a mount is like a repot, especially if it's come out of a pot to go on a mount. It's still a function of getting a plant in a place where hopefully it'll be happy and grow. Um, but to me, they are so similar, I personally don't see the fascination. And if I've got a, you know, if, if there's... 10 to 15 new videos this morning in my list of subscri subscriptions list, that's probably the one that's not going to get a look in, is a repotting one. <laughs> uh, unless it's a plant that I'm very particularly interested in, that I'm thinking of getting, that's awkward. Um, something like a Psychopsis, for instance, notorious um, objecting to repotting type plant, that is. They really don't like it. And yet some of them you repot them and they take off. You say, why didn't I do that sooner? Others repot them and they die. You know, they're, they're not all easy. Um, so that's that. So that was like an open-ended question. What is the fascination about repotting Phalaenopsis videos? <laughs> they are incredibly popular. They're not popular enough for me to do one. I did my store-bought um, Phalaenopsis series that started with getting them out of the pot, looking at them and deciding to repot and I've done the repotting Phalaenopsis. I'll probably never do another one. There's, there's one there if anybody wants to see it and that's where it lives. <laughs> yeah. Right, um, nothing much else going on out here. <coughs> Excuse me, incredibly dry throat today. Um, new plants, the um, there's something in the way. This one has gone already. That didn't last long, did it? <laughs> so that one's gone. And guess who didn't take a photo of it? So I now haven't got a record of that one. To steal one off the internet. Um, which is a bit of a nuisance, but uh, so be it. That went a bit quick. The bright yellow one and the um, spotty Odontoglossum type one, they're both still doing okay, but they still had buds to open. Um, which are uh, done now. Well, it's, you know, it's still a bug to go on one of them and on the other one. Um, so they're okay. And people have been giving me names for quite a few of these, which is handy because I hadn't got round to doing a search yet. Um, whether you find a registered name or not it depends on how 
the type of work you want to do for your plant. Finding a trade name is often quite easy um, and certainly both of these, I suppose I can get them out, some, some people might not have uh, seen them when I got them, but this one, it's um, thing that identifies this as separate from most of the others. So there are a lot of these type of blooms out there. Um, an awful lot that are incredibly similar, but there are very few that have got that pale lemon edge to the lip. Very, very few. And there is one that's around at the moment. So I'm quite happy to agree that that's what that one is. I can't remember what it was and it's not in my note yet because I haven't done it. And then the yellow one, um, my friend had a go about me with this one, but I think there was a bit of confusion because um, people put in the comments that this was Irish mist. Um, and technically it is, but that's not a registered name and that's not an Oncidium. There is a genuine article on Oncidium Irish mist that is registered. It's nothing like this, nothing at all like that, um, which is what my friend said. That's nothing like Irish mist. I've got Irish mist and it's nothing like that. But that's Oncidium Irish mist. This is um, something else. <laughs> It'll either be an Alisara, a Bialara, or a <laughs> something along those lines. But um, chances are those are trade names. They're not registered. And quite honestly with these intergenerics, I'm not that fussed whether I've got the right name or not. I really don't worry. Um, you know, even in a show you could just put that down as um, Oncidium intergeneric hybrid because you haven't got the proper name because half the time there isn't one. It's just a trade name. Um, and that, that's, that's how it is. And boy is it getting warm in here. Yeah, we've just gone over the 28 mark and I'm starting to leak. You can't have that. Right, so the Catlia's back in here. Um, we've got one set of blooms gone missing. I must now get the camera and get the picture of those two. And I'll have a look at the um, Tigrina now because I don't know whether we had three blooms last time. I don't know whether I got a quality picture of that. I won't bother taking a picture of the Miltonia Reginellii yet simply because I'll get a photo of a spike with four or five blooms open, you know, a long, long thin shot with several blooms on rather than just one. There's no point. Um, we've got buds coming in other places on Catlias. You know, swellings in sheaths, but they're going to be the autumn bloomers by the time they get round to blooming. Summer bloomers, Catlia summer bloomers, are, are not that common. They're the least common of all the Catlia types. Um, many are winter into spring, some are genuine spring, some are autumn. There aren't that many that are the middle of the flipping summer bloomers. I mean, and I've got two here, um, one of which was about to go in the bin. Um, and they are handy to have because there isn't much else around. Some of the hybrids bloom a couple of times a year. They can come out almost any time, but that's not species. You know, it's a, a difference. So. Um, Right, that's it for today. Lots of little bits and pieces. Um, hope you've enjoyed that. And like I've said, questions and answers are dependent on people leaving me questions in the comments that I can write down ready for a Thursday session. Now, how many I need to do a Thursday session, it's not a numbers game. It's not a numbers thing. It can be, for instance, Although you'll very rarely get a one-word answer from me, some questions are very simplistic in their nature to answer and they only need a few sentences so they're over and done with quickly. To, to do a reasonable session I'd need quite a lot of those but there are some questions where the answer is half the video because it leads off in directions that so much goes on as part of the answer to that question. So um, it's not a matter of how many, it's a matter of how long it's going to take to make a video worthwhile. So that's that. <clears throat> Plus actual suggestions for videos, um, always welcome. If they're possible, and I think that people, other people would be interested in them, they'll get done. Not necessarily immediately, but they will get done. <laughs> oh, I got told off as well. Those... Um, 
the field trip that I've just done, the forest ones that I did, um, the first part of the field trip, um, there is a plant that is um, a bit special. I mentioned it in the video. And um, on both of the Facebook groups where many others have taken pictures of those, not done a video, but taken pictures, many of those lists of comments under those photos have said where they are. But I got told off because my video clip and one of my photos actually showed that 15 mile an hour speed limit sign with the plant, which identifies its exact position. Well, do you need a picture? If somebody in their comment says, is that the one a few meters down from the 15 mile an hour speed limit, as far as I'm concerned, the game's up. Everybody knows where it is. Rare or not, it's already been said where it is. So putting a picture up surely makes no difference. But somebody had a moan and said, oh, I wonder how many weeks it will be before somebody digs that up in the middle of the night. There's loads of other pictures of it and loads of other people have said where it is. So I took no notice of that at all. <laughs> there are some plants that are so rare, um, their <clears throat> exact position has to be kept quiet. If somebody comes across something like that, they may put pictures on the Facebook group, but the pictures should be contrived in such a way that there is nothing in the background to give it away to its exact position, so that you could walk straight up to it almost blindfolded. Um, those sort of things should be held back. Um, and then you'll get, uh, I don't wish to know its exact location, but could you private message me to give me a clue so that I can find it? Well, now you've told someone. Who's that person going to tell? <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> Some things, if you don't want anybody to know, don't tell anyone. <laughs> it's, the, it's the old expression, hey, can you keep a secret? Well, I bet somebody just said that to you. Somebody said to you, can you keep a secret? And then you've gone straight up to somebody else and gone, can you keep a secret? Well, no, you obviously can't, can you? If you don't want anyone to know, don't tell anyone. <laughs> and then you keep it to yourself. Um, I've done that when I was younger, when I found really rare birds' nests. And nobody gets told, on the simple grounds, that that might be one of the only breeding pairs in the south of England this year. And somebody will be straight in there and steal the eggs. You know, for collectors, there used to be a lot of that in those days. So just don't tell anyone. Somebody else finds it, that's fine. But that's not your fault, you didn't tell them specifically. So some things do need to be kept quiet. That one, <laughs> how can you keep it quiet? It's on the side of the flipping road. Everybody knows there's um, Helleborns in Savernake Forest. And those that know that know that an awful lot of them are on the Grand Avenue. But it doesn't take much finding, does it, when it's this flipping eye with six or seven spikes on. Take Brain of Britain to spot that, although I did nearly drive past it. <laughs> anyway, there may not be any more field trips on the grounds that everything's getting a bit thin now this time of year. We shall see. I might come up with another <sighs> orchid stroke butterfly site just to catch the last few. But um, the forest butterflies have almost gone now. Um, yeah, it's probably not worth the attempt. Um, but there are still some downland areas that would have some interesting butterflies still around, some of which are on their second brood. So I might try and combine that with the last of the, of the orchids. <laughs> this time make sure they're flipping there, rather than clamber up some flipping hillside for a mile and a half up like that and then find this, or well, not find anything. I'm not going to say there was nothing there, but I didn't find anything. So uh, Anyway, see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Whoops, forgot one thing. And I brought it in here as well. Parcel. I need to show you what it is so that I can explain why. So I need to open it away from the camera because it's got my address on it. Right, now what we've got in here 
is two. And what we've got are both replacements for existing bits of kit. And they are new ones of those. Reason I got new ones of those. It doesn't matter how many times I put the clock right on that, it won't keep time. And I like to glance at that to see how the times go and if I'm doing a big session in here, like is it lunchtime yet, yeah, that sort of thing. So not having a clock on there, I thought that's worth replacing. And down here is my Vander bucket. Guess where the other one went the other day? <laughs> it was up there and it was perched. And I bent over and knocked the shelf and it just came off like that. I put my knee out to try and stop it and it just bounced off the edge of my knee and went sploop and sucked down to the bottom. So that ain't ever going to work again, not full of water. So um, basically I've got a replacement for that one so that the clock works. And a that one normally lives in, in there, in the lounge. And the reason I put up with it in there is because I've got other clocks in there. But out here I want one with a clock that works. So uh, one's a replacement for one that went swimming. And the other one's a replacement so that I've got one with a clock that works in both cases. Um, Eight pounds something for the two on eBay. I don't care if they only last six months. I'm not paying three or four times as much for something to tell me the temperature, the humidity and the time when I can get it for four pounds something. So two of those to replace the, uh, <laughs> the one that went scuba diving <laughs> without equipment. Not a good idea. And one with a missing uh, clock that doesn't work. Again, see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Thank you.